Here we are. Everyone, thank you so much for coming. My name is Bill Ottman. I'm a co-founder of Minds. We're a social network dedicated to civil dialogue. And we have been working with Jesse for the last year on, on writing this paper in collaboration with, with Daryl Davis and Justin Lane and a number of other really uh, fascinating humans uh, on how to combat radicalization through civil dialogue as opposed to censorship. And, um, you know, we're, we're all aware now of the tragic passing of, of Jesse recently, who's just a really powerful force in the world, really proving that anyone can change and, and become a powerful force for positive transformation. And so the paper that was essentially one of Jesse's last major projects is going to be coming out in February. And so I'll, I'll make sure to send it out to all of you. And yeah, I just wanted to start off with this, uh, this Martin Luther King quote. It is Martin Luther King Day. And I think that that has a nice relation to a lot of Jesse's work. Men often hate each other because they fear each other. They fear each other because they don't know each other. They don't know each other because they cannot communicate. They cannot communicate because they're separated. So, um, yeah, I'm going to go around the horn and see if there's any quick comments from anyone who want to reflect on, on Jesse's life. I met Jesse right before me and him did a podcast together um, called Reckoning. It was a really good podcast. And um, it was funny because when I first met Jesse, I felt the kinship with him. But when I heard the podcast and I heard about how he was from PA, from Pennsylvania, and he kind of lived on the streets just like me, um, we had a lot of, lot of things in common. And I think one of the things with Jesse's passing, one of the strong things that we can get out of this that I feel is that we have to remember that this former network is a tribe and we have to keep this tribe alive. We need to be here for the next guys and the next people getting out. And I know that's what Jesse was about. I know that. It doesn't matter what our political beliefs are. What, if we are formers, we have a message to give. I met him when he first got out of prison and he was very different when he first got out of prison. He, he was calling me uh, quite regularly um, as soon as he got out of prison. He was really different. Um, he, he, wa he wasn't yet the scholar um, that we all got to know. I mean, he was obviously brilliant, but much more, um, the diamond was visible, but the rough was also more visible. And um, he, I, he came to Boston, the first time he was allowed to travel, he came to Boston because our um, Carmen Ortiz, who was our US attorney, um, had a huge conference that was held in a big auditorium at MIT um, with law enforcement, U U.S. attorneys and law <laughs> enforcement personnel from all over the country. And they asked if I'd be willing to interview Jesse on the stage. I've obviously interviewed a lot of um, extremists, but I've never done it in public. Um, this was theatrical. And um, the minute we finished, we, we went off, he started sobbing and I, it was so overwhelming, um, the sadness that he, he carried and that he was able to turn into something so positive. I, I love the idea that, that he is bringing us together and that we encourage each other to continue the work that, that he was so good at. And we connected immediately. And he was always bringing people, you know, in to network. And that's the reason why we all are here today. We each come from different walks of life. Uh, some formers, some non-formers. As uh, Frankie pointed out, it didn't matter what, you know, political stance you have. We, Jesse handpicked us and brought us all together because he knew that we all could work together on this mission that he has. And it has become our mission. And, and Jesse handpicked us for a reason, because he knew that we, that we each had a valuable component to us. And when we put it together like a jigsaw puzzle, it's beautiful, and that will accomplish his mission. And that's how we want to remember Jesse. 
you know, I first met Jesse in, in 2015. And I think one of the things that uh, I really drew me to Jesse and really admired about Jesse, one of his, was his mind. He had such a, a brilliant mind in the way that he saw things, the connection between things. <clears throat> and, um, but, but like many of us living in the, in the world of, of, of formers, you know, it's, it's a challenge to um, work on your history and dealing with your history when you're still in it to some extent in, in this sort of space that we call CVE and, and, and all of that. But he was a real um, tour, tour de force. You know, sometimes he may have been a bull in a china shop, a little bit of that too, but sometimes that's, that's needed. I feel fortunate enough to have organized one of the last kind of audiences to hear from Jesse just before he passed away. And, um, you know, even, even then, just, you know, two years into COVID and two years into Microsoft Teams calls and Zoom calls and just his charisma was just bursting through the screen the same as it was when I sat and listened to him for, for the first time at that think tank event. Uh, and even for the people who were on the call, people who are not really specialists in the subject, um, you know, they were really, really taken with him and kind of hanging off his every word. And it's just a sad, sad irony that he just seemed so full of life and ideas and excitement even uh, just a couple of days before he passed away. But, you know, I do want to just come back to what I mentioned before about him, you know, maybe being a bit of a nonconformist to say the least. And it, it reminds me of um, something George Bernard Shaw, the Irish kind of writer, um, said a long time ago, but um, I'm going to butcher the quote, but it was something along the lines of um, kind of the, you know, normal people or the normal, your average man, wants uh, to conform to the world around him, whereas the difficult man persists in trying to make the world around them uh, conform to himself. Um, therefore, all progress relies on the difficult man. Some of the things that he and I were thinking about together as far as, you know, de-radicalization and prevention of violence, um, they stemmed from Jesse's experience of it and my somewhat understanding of it, the fact that so often people look away and you know make small talk and just pass by um, these you know horrible situations and hurting people and our culture makes it easier and easier for us to do that you know to just select content and interactions that are easy and don't burden us any more than you know they need to and I think Jesse's life would have been dramatically different if that were a little less true. And I think one way that I'm going to try to remember him is to see that in other people and to be there when, you know, I wish somebody was there for Jesse, you know, as he was hurting. And the way that people often talk about it, I work on an issue. Jesse was working on an issue and was the issue. What more do you need and want from a person than that? That everything that they are, do, think, and say is the embodiment of what they dedicate their life to. He, he was a living, breathing example of redemption and of friendship and of connection and of love and of disconnection and of hatred. And of all of those antagonisms, all of those opposites existing in a really productively tense space and that's a that's a power and a force that the world sees very few times in a generation and i loved every moment that i got to work with him on any project because it was it was it was working in what felt like the light you know i read a quote the other day that we work in the darkness to serve the light and that's what jesse did he was a man that worked and lived in darkness to serve a beautiful bright light and uh even you know even in his twitter handle uh, nur ala nur, light upon light. He was uh, fighting for light every single day. And I, I will miss having him by my side to do that work. Uh, worked very closely with, with Jesse. I don't know if they have anything to say later on. Uh, we're, we're at Ideas Beyond Borders and we partnered with Jesse um, on a lot of work. Um, Jesse was a very big believer in our project and likewise, uh, you know, we, we believed in him too and, and his important work. Um, yeah, it's, it's 
what we've been doing with Jesse is, is helping to bring ideas that are inaccessible to you know, parts of the Middle East, uh, especially those you know, that speak uh, in Arabic. So we digitize and, and make them freely available ideas that are just inaccessible to, to Arabic speakers in general. And this was something Jesse really, really wholeheartedly believed in. I mean, his whole life was about contact theory, about you know, contact with the other can change minds. And um, he was working with us right till, right till the end. And it was just such an abrupt end that I don't think any of us had, had time to process it. Um, I, I remember asking Jesse before I said, hey, when, when are we going to see the, the Hollywood movie of your life? Or when are we going to read, you know, an autobiography about you? And he always said to me, I'm not, it's not ready yet. I've done too many bad things in my life and I need to put more credits in the good jar before, before. I'm comfortable even talking about and, and having the world know about my life. I need to redeem myself. And he was always in this mindset where, where he, he still had so much work to do before he could even rest on his laurels and, and have the Jesse Morton story out. And, you know, I, I think where we are now, it's, it's kind of up to all of us. I mean, I'm meeting some of you for the first time, um, but it's, it's up to all of us to finish the, the Jesse Martin story because it's it's not over yet. Let me just say that I never met Jesse in person. Uh, we had plans to meet in early 2022 for a conference. So around now, at the time of recording. Um, but I only came into contact with Jesse a few years ago. And that's because he did a pretty strange thing he read my PhD. Who the hell reads PhDs? Anyway, um, Jesse wrote this Twitter thread about mine, uh, endorsing it. And the reason was um, somewhere uh, buried in those uh, 100,000 words or so <laughs> was a single sentence uh, where I conjectured on the possibility of having a parallel network uh, of folks who could compete against uh, more malevolent actors um, for adherence. And little did I know, uh, that's precisely what Jesse was doing. Um, and that's how we met. That's how our relationship started. Um, we would meet up uh, over Zoom. Uh, we'd curse and laugh and shout, criticize, uh, and then laugh again we would strategize, you know, um, how can we shift the needle? And those conversations were meant to come into fruition um, now, uh, here in Doha, where I'm, where I'm based. So if we're going to continue this legacy, and we should, uh, let's make sure that we at least make contact um, with each other and stay in touch. Um, so I wrote something down because I'm not always good on the spot. Um, Jesse used to say that he missed the concrete when he was away from the city for too long. He spoke with an implacable accent in a cadence that even sounded like the street, winding avenues on terrorism or fractals or network theory. To unwind, he'd watch YouTube lectures about countering violent extremism. You don't understand, he said. This is like R&B music for me. He talked through those two, arguing with the lecturers. For me, talking about the future in broad terms often felt like shouting into an apathetic void. But Jesse seemed to have an intimate relationship with world events. He took them personally. The future terrified and exhilarated him, maybe because he didn't know how profoundly he could change it, or because he did. Ibn Umar said, the messenger of Allah took me by the shoulder and said, be in this world as if you were a stranger or a traveler on the road. I'm grateful to have traveled this road with Jesse. I'm grateful to have known him, and I'm grateful to be sitting beside his daughter, Asiya, whose name he chose. It means one who tends to the weak and heals them. She has his eyes, and if she has even a fraction of his intelligence and his ambition and his curiosity, inshallah, God help us. 
Well, this is really amazing to see everyone in one place that, well, I'm sure not everyone or not even close to everyone that Jesse has worked with and touched. So I really appreciate everyone coming and I hope that we can keep this network going and we will. So I will definitely follow up with with this presentation at PeaceCon so that you guys can share it around. I'll, I'll definitely share uh, you know, his last paper that is gonna get released soon. And it's, um, you know, we're gonna miss you, Jesse. Thank you for everything you did and, and for bringing us together here.